So I'm getting some questions about stocks. So I just wanted to create this screencast to address the questions regarding stock. So I have the definition of here. Uh, stocks and securities represent ownership of a share in a company. So here we see the Amazon stock selling each share $3,000. Um, that is today, October 21. Let's click this graph and let's go back five years ago. So five years ago, Amazon stock was selling for $818. So if it was selling for $818 five years ago, and you bought one share, that share now is worth $3,437. So if you sell this share, you would get this amount. Meanwhile, you paid this particular amount. In a simulation, how does this work? So here we see the stock days. Each stock item that you have to get in class, a physical stock, will have a number on it. So if I purchase stock here, it should have a one. If I purchase it here, it should have three. I will always sell stock at a dollar, and then I will come in the next day and tell you the value of the stock. So if your stock was purchased, again, for a dollar on day one, on day two, let's say I come in and say, okay, the stock value is $3 you have the option of either holding on to it and hoping that by day three the stock will go higher than than three bucks um you know hopefully it stays the same and worst case scenario it goes down to zero at which point your company probably just went out of business and you are about to lose some money so we're looking at this slide here again um you will get a stock each stock has a day a number on it the number is telling you the day you purchase it one two three four going all the way up to eight you need to cut a cut the uh, stock out and you will physically tape staple or glue for the day pertaining to the purchase of the sale as i said i'll sell it for a dollar always and the value will be determined in the following day so let's just say i was going to sell this stock on day six on day two i'm going to put value on day two the value for the stock was two dollars over here it was valued at three day four it was at five over here it was eight and then it went to nine if you sold it on day six you paid a dollar for it on day one the value of it is now nine bucks you just made eight so imagine you sell it you're gonna put an X on the actual stock card indicating that you sold it you have to keep track of this so you bought it for a dollar you sell it for eight, you now have eight dollars on hand cash that's available. You can put that in the bank, you can buy more stock, or you can uh, simply just hold on to it or buy one of the you know specialty items. Let's say we go on to the next day. Well, on the next day, if that stock is worth 20 bucks, you probably sold too early. By selling here, the stock is selling for nine or the value is at nine. Here it's 20. Why would why would this matter? Well, I don't know. You saw the stock going up. What if the stock went down to, let's say, four dollars? Over here, it was selling for what, nine bucks? I think that's what I said. I shouldn't have erased it. Nine bucks. So if you sold here, you're in a good position because you paid a dollar for it on day one, and here you have uh, nine dollars. You sold it, so you made a profit of eight. But if you sold it on day seven, it's only valued at four. If you're wondering where this the value come from it comes from people buying and selling in the stock market on any given day so here you see the opening the highest amazon stock is sold for today is this amount the lowest is this amount and this is uh, dependent on a couple of factors that we just don't need to get into so for the most part for the simulation you will have a stock you will place the day that pertains to the day you purchase the stock it'll have one two three all the way up to eight and you're always going to pay a dollar for it, but the next day I'll give you a value, and then you need to make a decision about whether or not you're going to sell it. If you sell the stock, then that just becomes money that you have. So again, if I spent it, uh, spent a dollar on it, and I sold it over here for eight, I now have that eight dollars in my hand because I sold that profit that that uh, stock. So now I have a profit of seven, and so I'm just going to cross out. One of the things that's uh, taking place during the simulation is the option to buy stock on credit. 
So when you buy stock on credit, that means that you are buying the stock on the margin. Or buying on the margin was the term. That's buying stock on credit. So let's just use my example here. On day one, remember my stock, I'm always selling it at a dollar. If you don't have a dollar, you can buy stock on credit, which means you are taking a loan. We'll put over here, I'm just going to put bank. He's giving you a loan, probably be a broker house, whatever. They're lending you a dollar. Now you have the actual stock. You have the card. You can place the stock here for that particular day. On day two, if that stock is valued at $9, you can sell that stock. You're going to put it X here, indicating that you sold it. You are selling it for 9 bucks, but you still have to pay back the dollar to the bank that you borrowed the dollar you know, to purchase the stock, which means you're walking away with about 8 the end result in this, during the 20s, this buying on the margin is going to lead to people buying stocks in great numbers, which is going to create a boom, and you're going to see the stock market take off because people are buying stock on credit. Why is this a danger? Let's take the situation where I bought the stock for a dollar, but I wanted to buy 10,000 shares of this stock, and I bought it all on credit. I now have 10,000 shares and I've purchased for $10,000. Let's just say on day two, that stock is now valued at 50 cents. For some reason, I still I have to sell this stock. I don't know. I'm caught in a bind. I lost my job. I'm starting to panic. I don't know. If I sell all of my 10,000 shares of stock, I'm only going to get 50 cents because that's what it's selling for on day two. It's half the price, which means when I sell all of those 10,000 shares, I'm only getting $5,000. Well, remember, I initially took out a loan to buy 10,000 shares of stock at $1 each, and I took out a loan from the bank. The bank doesn't look at the situation and say, oh, sorry, you bought 10,000 shares of stock at a dollar. Um, you don't have to pay us back 10,000. Just pay us what the stock is worth. No. The bank knows that you borrowed $10,000 to buy your 10,000 shares, and they are going to want their $10,000 back. The problem is you can only sell it for $0.50 cents each share, and when you do that, you have $5,000. So you can only pay back half of the loan. The other $5,000 you would have to obtain somehow. I have no idea. Anyway, hopefully that's how stocks work, uh, or hopefully that gives you some idea of how stocks work, uh, and that's how this particular sheet's filled out.